Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Adeni Kebabalola and today we'll be talking about the IELTS writing task 2, do you agree or disagree question, okay? This is an opinion essay and we're going to look at, you know, a sample. We're going to look at this question and how you can attempt it, all right? Now, you know that so many IELTS test takers struggle with, um, you know, sharing their ideas, developing them and, you know, writing an excellent essay for the task two, um, you know, part of the IELTS test. But in this video, I'm going to teach you how to answer a question like this. Okay, so before we go on, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please make sure you do that right now and turn on the notification bell so that when I, you know, post a new video every week, you get access to it. All right. Okay, so let's dive right in. Now you have this question. It says, in the future, more people would choose to go on holiday in their own country and not travel abroad on holiday. Do you agree or disagree? Now, the first thing you want to do is understand the question, okay? So the first step is to understand the question. And to understand the question, you need to read that question again and, you know, change some words in the future. So that means, um, let's say, two years from now, five years from now, or maybe 10 years from now, okay? So in the future more people okay so it means that if 10 people are doing that right now let's say 100 people okay that number has you know increased we'll choose to go on holiday okay so it's like saying um they would make that decision to have their vacation or something like that in their own country okay so i'm a nigerian i'm nigerian so i will stay in nigeria and not travel abroad on holiday i would not go to kenya or the united states or france Okay, so what they're saying is, let's say five years from now, many people would decide to stay in their own country in Nigeria, for example, to, you know, have their vacation instead of going to France or going to Italy or something like that. Okay, now the question they're asking you is, do you agree or disagree? So what is your position? What do you think? Do you think people will stay in their own country or they would prefer to go to other countries? Okay, so if you agree, you are saying yes to this. You're saying, okay, people will stay in Nigeria instead of going to France five years from now. If you disagree, you're saying no, people would prefer to go to France instead of staying in Nigeria. So let me show you. Let's just go to my word document so that we can begin to write, okay? So the question says, do you agree or disagree? Now let's assume we want to agree, but you remember what I said about the first step? Step one is for you to understand the question, okay? I'm using um, uppercase, but I'm going to switch with time. So let me just make this a little, you know, bolder for you to see, okay? So I already made the, the first step before you even decide to agree. The first step is that you decide, you, you know, you read the question in a way to understand it. So, you know, what I came up with, my paraphrase was something like, okay, so let's say um, in five years from now, more people would prefer to stay in Nigeria for their vacation instead of going to France. Oh, forgive me. Okay. So this is my paraphrase of the question. That does not mean this is what you write. This is just what you did to help yourself understand the question. Okay. So this is it. But of course, when you're writing your introduction, you're going to have to write, you know, paraphrase exactly what the question gave you. Okay. Now you want to ask yourself, do you agree or disagree? Okay. So let me, I'm choosing to agree. All right. I want to agree. Now, once you, so this, you know, step two, step two is to decide, um, let me go back, is to decide your own opinion or, you know, it's an opinion question. So you decide your opinion. And in this case, my opinion is agree. Okay. So step three now is to, you know, come up with points. Okay. Come up with points. You need like two or three points. So you come up with two or three, two to three points to um, support your opinion because you cannot give an opinion without backing it up. 
Okay, so come up with two to three points to support your opinion. So let's see, what would the first opinion be? So the first opinion can be, um, let's say, safety. You can say safety. Yeah, people want to feel, um, you know, we can say that the, the rate of crime will. Now, remember that the question is in future tense. Let me go back to the question so you can see it. Okay, the question said, in the future, more people will choose to go on holiday, will choose. Okay, so we are talking about something that will happen later, not right now. Okay, so when you're coming up with your points, your, your tense has to be, you know, there will be an increase in crime rates. And so more people would be interested in safety, in their safety. Okay, so they would prefer to stay. You have to keep using that future tense wheel. Okay, you have to keep using that future tense. So let's go back to the Word document. Okay, so you have this. Um, one point is safety. Okay, and you know you can just stretch it a little and say, um, yeah, of course, you've not started writing. You're still you're still preparing your essay. Okay, there will be an increase in crime rates. Okay, so that's what would make people emphasize safety, okay? That's one. So, but this safety now is, is focusing on crime or is related to crime. So another point, what's, what other point can we use for, um, you know, what, what other point can we use to support this? To say, okay, yeah, people will stay in Nigeria or stay in their own countries. Then you can say, um, you can say love for, what's that word called? I think it's patriotism, right? Yes. Love for one's country. Aha. So we can have patriotism where you say more people will love their country or be interested. More people will love develop sorry, develop more interests in their countries. Okay, in their country, something like that. Okay, so the second point now is patriotism okay so we've talked about safety we've talked about patriotism and i think another point that's coming to mind is perhaps maybe coronavirus would not entirely be gone so we can say um health precautions okay health precautions and this is you know owing to owing to um, the continual presence no presence of the corona virus okay so i have three points okay can you see the steps step one was to understand the question and we came up with this semi <laughs> semi introduction okay so that you can understand it so we just we just i allowed you or i allowed myself to understand it by inserting you know alternative forms into it so that it is clearer Okay, so step two is to decide what your opinion is, and I chose to agree. And then step three was to come up with points to support your opinion. Okay, so we have these three points. Now, note that you can choose two points, and then you can choose three points. Okay, so I'm going to show you very quickly. I'm going to list out some sentences. Okay, I might not write out the full essay right now, because I want this to be, I just want to show you a quick way to attempt this. But I'm going to list out all the sentences you need to complete this essay. I've already given you your points. The points you, you need are already present. So I'm gonna list out the sentences you need. Now this is, because we have three points, so we're gonna have three paragraphs, okay? Three points means that you're going to have three body paragraphs, okay? Sorry, you're going to have equals three body paragraphs, all right? And you know, the full, everything you should have normally is your introduction, okay? Your body paragraph one, okay? Your body paragraph two. If you had just two points, then you would have just two body paragraphs, but I have three points, okay? So I can have three um, body paragraphs. And this is, you know, just is a typical opinion essay. So you, you can have three points. It's not like the, so what extent do you agree or disagree? Well, you should have two points for the side you favor and one point for the other side. And, um, you know, the same thing applies to the, um, to the advantages outweigh the disadvantages, that kind of thing. 
you know, you want to talk about two advantages or two disadvantages and one for the other side, okay? And the final thing you need here is your conclusion. Conclusion, good. So this five, when you're structuring your essay, these five things, um, you know, these are the main things you need, okay? These are the five parts, these are the five paragraphs your essay is gonna have. You're gonna have your introduction, your body paragraph one, body paragraph two, body paragraph three, and then your conclusion. So what I want to do now is I wanna give you the sentences that you need for each paragraph. That's for each of them. I, I'm not gonna write out this full essay right now, but I want to empower you with the sentences that you need to complete this essay. So let's take the introduction. On that introduction, you need two sentences. I'm gonna use bullet points so it will be easy, okay? So you have the first sentence, okay? I'm, I'm just gonna number them. Sentence one, oh, I don't wanna use bold. I wanna use, you know, the regular, yeah. So sentence one would be for you to paraphrase the question, okay? Now, remember that what I did here was just for us to understand the question. This is not exactly the paraphrase. So if you're gonna paraphrase the question, you can have something like, um, the question said in the future, right? So we can say, um, uh, what can we use in the future? Um, in coming years, okay? In coming years, then I remember it said more people would choose to um, go for holiday in their own country. It's interesting how I remember the question. <laughs> so in coming years, um, more individuals, or instead of using that more, you can just say a greater number of individuals will prefer to spend their holiday and their holidays in their country. Okay. We can even say in their, yeah, we can say in their country, or we can even you know, build it up and say in their country of residence rather than, I think the other one said, um, um, you will choose to go, let's look at it. Let's look at it so I don't get it wrong. Okay, so this is it, yeah. It says, um, where is it? Yeah, in the future, more people choose to go on holiday in their own country and not travel abroad, okay? And not travel abroad on holiday. So that's the path we want to complete now, and not travel abroad. So we want to say rather than going abroad for um, holiday and vacation, that is exactly the same thing. Let me check the synonym here. Yeah. Now, this is what you do when you're practicing. If you're not sure of something, check, okay? So you have breaks, trips, outings. Okay, I think I want to use vacations. I hope it's a good choice, all right? Rather than going abroad for... We can even stop here because we don't need to repeat what we're saying, okay? So, we can, so you have something like this. In coming years, a greater number of individuals will prefer to spend their holidays in their country of residence rather than going abroad, Okay? So you can say rather than going abroad, or you can even ex you know, extend it rather than going abroad for vacations or something like that. This is, you, you have done the paraphrase of this question. That's your paraphrase, it is that simple. Now you see that I didn't change every word. I still started with the preposition in, okay? All the days is still there, country is still there, okay? So you find that even this abroad is still there. And if you don't wanna say abroad, can say rather than going to other countries, okay? You can say rather um, rather than going to other countries for vacation, okay? So you can see that this is just how you paraphrase the question. You just have to rewrite it in a new way. That is your sentence one. That's your first sentence, all right? Now let's do sentence two. Sentence two, I'm choosing to use the bold so that it can stand out, okay? Sentence two is where you now give your response. You need to add your response. And in the process of giving your response, you need to summarize, okay? Plus, allow me to do plus the summary of your points, okay? Give your response plus a summary of your points. Now, we're going to do that together. I want to show you how it's done so that you can replicate this for other types of essays, okay? Even if it's um, a problem-solution essay that's cause a solution or advantages, disadvantages, 
or direct a double question essay. You can, you know, you can do something like this. Okay, so let me let me let me um, bring this together. The, these three points that we had here, we're going to bring them together. Just this first, just these initial words are what we're going to bring together. And this is an opinion essay, so you have to give you, you have to use a phrase that shows your opinion. So you can start with something like this. In my opinion, um, this this statement is accurate. As people will focus on safety uh, and, and safety in terms of crime, in terms of growing crime rates, let's do that. In terms of growing crime rates, patriotism, did I get the spelling right? Patriotism to be a country and a need to be health conscious due to the coronavirus. Good. Did you see what I did there? I tried to fit them in. This three, even if it was still these three words I used, I picked a few words from here so that the sentence would look good. Okay. So this is the initial paraphrase. I'm, I'm going to use bold, or I can even just use another color. Let's, let's do some color things here. So let's use red, okay? In coming years, a greater number of individuals will prefer to spend their holidays in their country of residence rather than going to other countries for vacation. Okay, I don't think there should be an S there. It's sounding odd, okay? So that's it. Now, th that, that first one is the paraphrase of the question. Now you want to give your response and your response contains a summary of your point, okay? So let's pick another color. I think I like green, okay? So we have this. This is your introduction. You can say this is done, all right? I wish there was a check sign. If it were my phone, I would just mark it. So I, but I can't find that right now, okay? But in short, you have completed this. This is done. You just mark it for yourself. <laughs> okay, so your introduction is ready. All you need is this first sentence and this second sentence, and you're good to go. All right, now let's go on to body paragraph one, two, three. Okay, so we're gonna do the same sentence by sentence thing, okay? So you have sentence one and sentence two in introduction. Now for body paragraph one, body paragraph two, body paragraph three, you also just need three sentences and I'm gonna call them their names, okay? So, but allow me to continue this whole sentence numbering thing. So this is also, I'm gonna call this sentence three. Sentence, oh, why did I put W um, back? Yeah, sentence four and then sentence five, okay? Yeah, so the same thing is gonna happen for body paragraph two. They're going to have sentence six, sentence seven and then sentence eight. See, I'm, I'm doing this thing like math because English is not a mother tongue for most people. Most of people taking the IELTS are non-native speakers. So I, I tried to make, make this a little from a lake so that you can just get used to a pattern and keep repeating it. It doesn't have to be rigid like this. I like when things are flexible and you can you know, vary things the way you like, but um, from my experience, I see that people want to have things figured out. So if you have a method like this, I hope I've not missed any number, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, okay? And then we have, we're going, in conclusion, we're gonna have um, sentence, the same way we added for the introduction, we're going to have sentence, well, and then sentence 13. Why? I need it to be bold. Yeah. Sentence 13. So you see that all together, you're going to have 13 sentences. But beyond the numbering sentence, this and that, let's see what we're putting inside here. Now, you know that in the introduction, this is what you did paraphrase the question and then give your response, you know, for the summary of your points. Now, for each body paragraph, you are going to have something. Okay, now let me show you what that something is. Each body paragraph should have three elements. The first element is your topic sentence. Okay, the topic sentence is a simple sentence. Let me put that in brackets, okay? 
is a simple sentence that states your point. Okay? If you check the writing criteria, that's the urban descriptor, you find that examiners want you to state your point clearly before you even go on to explain the point and on and on, okay? But the first thing they want you to do is to state your point. And to state your point, you need a topic sentence, which is a simple sentence, just like saying, Adenike is a girl, okay? That's a simple point. Well, am I a girl? <laughs> okay, but that's what, what I'm trying to say is you need a topic sentence to begin with, all right? The second sentence you need is uh, supporting, I don't want bold anymore, supporting sentence, okay? And this time around, you can have a compound or complex sentence. What are you using this sentence for? To develop your point. All right, use it to develop your point. The second thing examiners want you to do is state your point, okay, and then develop your point. S extend it a little, stretch it a bit more, okay? Excuse me. So the same thing applies to your, um, you know, the, the next sentence that comes after it is your example sentence, okay? Example sentence. And that is going to also be, that can also be, a compound complex sentence. And what do you use this for? You use it to illustrate your points, okay? Sometimes you see it as support, okay? Support is you're giving an example, excuse me, to back up what you said, okay? To illustrate your point. These three sentences are the most important when you do a task too. That's as far as developing your paragraphs are concerned. Topic sentence is important. Supporting sentence is important. And example sentence is also important. The three sentences are important. So you're going to do the same thing for you know, other parts. You copy this and you place it here. This should also have this, okay? And let me do the same thing for the third. Let me do the same thing for the third body paragraph, okay? You need the same thing here. Every body paragraph should have a should start with a top, um, sub, um, topic sentence. Okay. Every body paragraph should also have a supporting sentence after the topic sentence. So I paste that there. Okay. I paste that there. Uh, and then I'm going to do it for the third body paragraph as well. Um, I don't want this video to be too long. So I'm just going to show you. I'm just gonna you know, do this with one example, okay? That's with one of the points, but I want you to know that this is how it works in general, okay? So every body paragraph should have an example, all right? But you know that this is the opinion essay. For other essays, you might need to make some adjustments. For example, with the cause and solution essay, where you have four paragraphs strictly, each paragraph would have two points. So you know that for each, you know, each paragraph, instead of you just having, in this case, you can see that each paragraph has three sent them, you know, three sentences. In the case of a cause of solution, double or direct question, and then advantages to advantages essay, you're going to have six sentences in one. So you're going to have topic supporting example for the first point. And then you, in that same paragraph, you have topic supporting example again. So you would have six sentences for body paragraph one, six sentences for body paragraph two, and that is it. Okay, so you've seen what this looks like, right? You see that each paragraph is going to have a topic supporting example. Topic supporting example. Topic supporting example. Do you see that? Let's quickly fill in the conclusion, okay? Before we now go and write one example. I, I hope this video is going to stay within 15 and 20 minutes. I hope so. So let's just move on quickly. Okay, so this is the conclusion. The same thing you did for your introduction is what you're going to do for your conclusion. It's just that you might not write it in the exact same way, okay? So this introduction now, you say, um, the way we paraphrase the question, yeah, okay? That's what you're going to do in the conclusion. You paraphrase the question again. That's the essay question, okay? So you paraphrase the essay question. Oh no, I didn't copy that, sorry. Undo, let me go back and um, paraphrase the question, copy. 
Yeah, let me paste it. Sorry, what did I do? Okay. Yeah, paste it. So you paraphrase the question again. All right, but you know this time around, you'll be starting with something like, in conclusion, in conclusion, you know, you just rephrase what you add in the beginning. So you can say in conclusion, um, it's believed, okay? So you can just say, it is believed that more um, um, a higher number, a higher number of people will decide to holiday. I'm gonna use holiday in, as a verb now. So holiday in, yeah, country of residence instead of traveling. I'm changing the verb now to uh, to uh, progressive. Instead of traveling to foreign countries. You see that it's nearly the same thing, but you know, I'm just touching it up a little. Okay, so you see this in conclusion, it is believed that a higher number of people would decide to holiday in their country of residence instead of traveling to foreign countries. Now that's what you do when you paraphrase, okay? Now, the second thing is to summarize the points you talked about. Okay, we are doing something like this, right? But instead of doing this exact same thing, we're just going to say, let me, I'm gonna paste it. Yeah, but instead of doing this, what you're just gonna do is you summarize the points you talked or you wrote about, but summarize the points you discussed in the body paragraphs. It's still the same thing, right? So we can delete this one, but I brought it here to show you that you're doing about the same thing and I don't want the bold anymore, so. Okay, yeah, so this is it. So you summarize the points you discuss in the body paragraphs and all you have to do is to just rewrite this. So you just go again, I believe that okay, the need to be to feel safe, to love one's country and to stay healthy, you know, are three reasons why this would be so. So let me write it down, let me put it there. So you can have, I believe that the need to, the need to feel safe, love one's country, Um, love one's country and stay healthy. Three reasons why this reality. Well, you know, it's even a prediction, right? Yeah. Why this prediction will come to pass. Stop. Okay. So this is your conclusion. Let me put, let me put them in colors. Okay. Let me put them in colors. So we used red and green before, right? So let's try, um, let's try, this is like a blue. And then let me pick another, no, 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 I'm not starting from there. I'm starting from here. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, so let me pick another color. So we can take this and say purple. It's not very bright, but I think it does the job. Okay, so this is it. So we've done the introduction, we've done the conclusion. I just wanted to do that fast so you can see it. Now let's work on one body paragraph. I'm not gonna do the three examples, okay? But I already showed you what each paragraph will look like. I just wanna work on one example so you can see it. So let's take the point of safety because there will be an increase in crime rate, okay? Let's take safety. So how do you present it as a topic sentence? So you can say, to begin with, okay, more people, more people, um, more people would, what would I, what can we use now? That's the thing, when you're trying to express yourself in a very simple way, it becomes a little tricky, okay? More people would place their safety above um, vacations abroad. It might be I keep putting an S. Okay, above vacation abroad or above, um, 
don't like the sound of that. So let's do it again. Above spending, yeah, holidays. What did I do? Holidays abroad. Okay, to begin with, more people will place their safety above spending their holidays abroad. What I'm saying is they're going to choose safety above traveling out, okay? Now, because this, making this point alone is not clear. It's not, you know, it's, it's, it's just a point. You have not explained it, okay? And I think that, you know, if you write it differently, it can even come out clearer, okay? So you can, you can, you need to extend this. You need to say more to build this up. So let me just put that in highlights in some color. Okay, let me see. Let's put that in, um, this looks like wine, right? Another kind of red, yeah, that's white. Okay, so for, for the supporting sentence now, you want to explain what you said up here. Okay, you want to explain what you said here. So this is it. Um, you can start with something like this. This implies that. Okay, if you don't want to say this implies that you can say what I mean, okay, what I mean or what this means is that something like that. Okay, so let me continue. This implies that, remember that I'm using the future tense, right? Your place. Uh -huh. So this implies that you need to um, enjoy security amidst growing crime rates will cause people will cause people to remain in their country and um, to remain in their country and I already what did I, what did I use I used enjoy yeah will cause people to remain in their country and spend their um, I think I didn't use vacations before right yeah loved ones or with their friends and families okay so now do you see that this sentence is a bit longer let me put it in color let me put it in um oh yellow is sharp no 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 let's use this blue okay so you see let me read that again this implies that the need to enjoy security and means growing crime rates will cause people to remain in their country and spend their vacations um, with loved ones, okay, with friends and family. I don't need to use this DI again, with friends and family. All of those words you want to remove, you can actually remove them at the end when you're proofreading, okay? But for now, just write the point. So you see that this one is just, this is just short. You just stated your point. And out here, you've, you've tried to explain it further, okay? So you're saying that there'll be growing crime rates. And you see, I use security here yeah, as a synonym for safety. Okay, and then instead of saying spending their holidays abroad, I use remain in their country and you know spend their vacation with friends and families. But of course, the fact that you made this point still does not mean that you have fully explained your point. So you still need an example sentence. And that's why we're going to come here and say something like this as an illustration. As an illustration. Okay. Um, as an illustration, um, uh, yeah, you can say it is argued, it is argued that the number of rape and robbery cases around the world, around the world will triple, okay? and it is advisable, advisable that people remain, I don't want to use remain again, that people um, stay within, um, what can we use? I'm getting a bit stuck. It's advisable that people stay within, um, safer regions, let me just say something like that, to prevent, um, what's the word? To prevent um, consequences that could be abated. okay? Now, 
I have tried to give an example. I don't really like how this is coming out because it feels like I'm doing some serious thinking, okay? But this is how it works. You have made your point. You have stretched the point a little further, yeah. And then this is an example, okay? So let me put this in color as well. So let me use, uh, what color have we not used? Let's see, I need, uh, aha, let's use this color. As an illustration, it is argued that the, oh, sorry. The number of rape and robbery cases around the world will triple, and it's advisable that people stay within safer regions to prevent consequences that could be averted, okay? So it's a case of, if you don't want some bad things to happen, then it is better to stay back in your own country where you feel safe. And I gave examples of crime. What are the examples? Rape and robbery. Okay, so this is how you do a body paragraph, okay? This is, our, this is just body paragraph one. I, I, I wrote just one point out. Let's now, let's imagine that, you know, everything was in one. What you would have is, to begin with, more people will place their safety. Let me, you know what, let's just do this. Let's copy it out, copy, and then take it to the bottom of the page. Okay, so let's, yeah. So this is still body paragraph one, but I want to show you without using the bullet point. I want to show you a complete, um, thing. So let's take the second one. I've taken the to topic sentence. Now I'm, I'm taking the supporting sentence and I'm placing it here. Good. And then I'm going to take the example sentence as well. So this is the substance and this is the example sentence. I'm copying it and then I'm going to take it down here so that we can read it as a complete one. Very good. I think I want to justify I'm gonna justify, good, it looks nicer this way. Good, now see, to begin with, more people will place their safety above spending their holidays abroad. This implies that the need to enjoy security and this growing crime rate will cause people to remain in their country and spend their vacations with families and uh, with friends and family, okay? As an illustration, it is argued that the number of rape and robbery cases around the world will triple, and it is advisable that people stay within safer regions to prevent consequences that could be averted. This is a complete body paragraph. This is your first point, and that point was about safety. So when you want to talk about body paragraph two and body paragraph three, you do the same thing. What, what are the points? The points for body paragraph two was patriotism and for body paragraph three is health precautions because of the coronavirus. This is the same structure that you follow, okay? This is what it would look like. Okay, so did you enjoy this? <laughs> did you enjoy doing this? I think I did and I think I like the colors, you know, especially. So let's go back. Let me show you the question again. When you have a question like this, you remember to follow the steps, okay? This, this question said, in the future, more people would choose to go on holiday in their own country and not travel abroad on holiday, okay? And it was, a, you know, it's a do you agree or disagree question. And then what we did was we followed certain steps. Step one was to understand the question and we did something like this. I used, you know, being in Nigeria as an example. So you do something like that, then you decide your opinion. Then the third thing is you come up with points and then you structure this, you know, the fourth step, step four is to structure. I think I didn't spell that out. So let me just put it here. Okay, step four is to structure your paragraphs, which was what we did, right? Yeah, we decided the introduction, body paragraph one, body paragraph two, um, body paragraph three, and then conclusion. Remember what I said, you don't need to have three points. You can have, you know, two points. It's just that, just that in that case, you might need an emphasis sentence after your example sentence, just to stretch it a bit further, to explain your example and connect it back to your topic sentence, all right? So this is it. This is how you attempt an opinion essay that is, do you agree or disagree, okay? Remember that this is the IELTS writing task two, okay? And it is the opinion. It's one of the eight forms of the opinion essay, okay? So this is it. I hope that I helped you. I hope that you enjoyed learning and I hope that you can, you know, I would love you to try body paragraph two and body paragraph three. So this is the end of the video. Did you like it? Did you enjoy it? If you did like it, please remember to 
leave a like, make sure you like the video. I'd also like to see your comments. Did you enjoy watching it? Did you learn? Was it simple? Please leave a comment. I also want you to share it with about three people, three people that you know are taking the IELTS test as well. And um, if you want to join my IELTS masterclass, an online course I created to help people with the IELTS test, please click the link in my description box. You would, um, yeah, you would see um, the link to the IELTS masterclass. And of course, I have many other videos on the IELTS writing, task one and task two. So I'll provide the links to them as well. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And once again, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.